Hey guys, right now it's around 9, 10, or 9, 13. And before bedtime, it's news reading time. Every news reading time will be at around 9 o'clock or 9, 10. And I will read for about 30 minutes straight before it's bedtime. So today, the website I will be reading is called Business Insider. And the hottest news from Business Insider is, here it goes. Live updates. Gen 6 Live outtakes show Trump refusing to say the election is over. In video to reorders. Two hour ago. Trump's awkward Gen 7 video outtakes reveal his behavior behind the scenes as he argued with Ivanka. Slam the podium and fumble over his words. A series of video clips shown by House, January 6, committee give shocking insight into former President Donald Trump behavior behind the scenes. The video from January 7 last year, around 24 hours after reorders warmed the Capitol, was playing during the January 6 panel 8 public hearing on Thursday. The panel was shown a take where plays appeared where Trump appeared to struggle with disavowing the violence during the riot, and another where he banged on the podium in frustration after failing to say the word defiled. In another take, Trump paused partway through his address and began debating the language with his daughter Ivanka. He refused to say four words suggested by AIDS. The election is over. Two hours ago, Video shows Yan Six hearing Zoom. Room bursts into laughter when showing footage of Josh Harley fleeing the Capitol riot. A video shows attendees of Thursday, January 6, committee hearing erupted into laughter when they were showing footage of GOP Sand Josh Hawley fleeing the Capitol during the insurrection. Rep. Elaine Luria, a Democrat on the committee, said that hours before fleeing, Holly was seen raising his fist in solidarity with the protesters and that a Capitol police officer told the panel that the gesture riled up the crowd. The committee then played never-seen-before footage of Holly running across a hallway and down a flight of stairs as the Capitol riot was underway. Footage from the inside the January 6 hearing room on Thursday showed the audience bursting into laughter as the clip was played. Michael Fanone, a former DC police officer who was brutally beaten by January 6 reorders, said Holly ran like a coward and called him a clown. Two hours ago, Sarah Matthews previously said Trump tweet about Pence was like pouring gasoline on the fire. Gasoline. Sarah Matthews, former Deputy Press Secretary for the Trump White House, testified before the House Select Committee investigating the Capitol attack on Thursday night. Matthews was the Deputy Press Secretary in the final month of Donald Trump presidency. She was one of several aides to resign on the day of the Capitol riot on January 6, 2021. She said in February that Trump tweeted about Mike Pence not having the courage to overturn the election was like pouring gasoline on the fire. She elaborated on that sentiment during her testimony on Thursday night. I thought the tweet about the vice president was the last thing was needed in the moment. Matthew told lawmakers it was essentially give him giving the green light to these people, telling them that where they were doing at the steps of the Capitol and entering the Capitol was okay, that they were just justified in their anger, she added, and he shouldn't have been doing that. He should have been telling these people to go home and to leave and to condemn the violence that we are seeing. 11 hours ago, new video shows Trump wouldn't say the election is over as he practiced his speech on January 7, 2021. A day after January 6, 2021 attack on the Capitol, 
Trump condemned his Rotia supporters, saying they did not represent our movement or the country. But he refused to say four words his aide suggested. The election is over. For the first time Thursday, the House committee investigating the Capitol attack aired unedited footage of Trump recording his national address on January 7, 2021, in which he declared that real orders involved in the insurrection broke the law and will pay. It was marked change in tone from the day of the attack, in which Trump recorded a video telling the angry mob, Go home, we'll love you. You're very special. 11 hours ago, the House GOP appears to have mistakenly tweeted this is her say in response to the latest January 6 hearing, what it meant to say her say. 12 hours ago, Twitter is having a field day with the January 6 committee, shifts the position of Josh Hawley, raising his fist in solidarity with the protesters and fleeing hours later. The Jan 6 committee showed the photo of Sen Josh Hawley raising his flag in solidarity with protesters, storming the Capitol. Then they play a video of him running from the protester he helped rile. Twitter used Twitter user had a field day with chicken, Forrest Gump, and running Gibbs, some set to music. Twelve hours ago, Rep. Adam Kinsinger said Kevin McCarthy was scared and begging for help from Trump and his family members on January 6. Leader Mark McCarthy, who was one of the president's strongest supporters, was scared and began begging for help. President Trump turned him down, so he tried to call the president's children, Ken Zinger, and annoys Republican, a member of the January 6 committee, said during Thursday's hearing. Twelve hours ago, the House Republican official Twitter account attacked a January 6 witness who currently worked for House Republicans. Just another liar and pawn in Pelosi's switch hunt. The House GOP account wrote in a now deleted tweet that retweeted Sarah Matthews, who served as Trump Deputy Press Secretary. She is testifying before the January 6 committee on Thursday and is now the communication director for Republican on the House Select Committee on the Climate Crisis. Twelve hours ago, Jared Kushner testified to the January 6 committee that he was taking a shower as his father-in-law supporters stormed the Capitol. So I heard my phone ring, turn the shower off, so I was leader McCarthy, who I had a good relationship with. Kushner said in video testimony the committee played on Thursday. He told me it was getting really ugly over the Capitol and said, please, anything you could do to help, I would appreciate it. Twelve hours ago, Trump was pouring gasoline on the fire with Penn's tweet, making January 6 much worse, former aide Sarah Matthews testifies. Then President Donald Trump disagreed, disregarded pleas from his own staff, calling him for to seek an end to the January 6, 2021 violence, and instead he sent a tweet attacking his own vice president that was akin to pouring gasoline on the fire and making it much worse. A former aide testified Thursday. Mike Pence didn't have the courage to do what should have been done to protect our country and our constitution. Trump tweeted at 2.24 p.m. on January 6, 2021. I thought that tweet about the vice president was the last thing we need in the moment. Sarah Matthews, a former White House deputy press secretary, told the January 6 committee on Thursday. Next news, let's see if there are any more special news in here. Um, maybe this one. A 700,000 square foot Amazon warehouse in Nebraska was supposed to create a thousand jobs, but is sitting empty as the company delays opening new facilities. 
Less than two years ago, Greater Omaha's Chamber of Commerce tooted plans for a 700,000 square foot Amazon warehouse facility in the Omaha suburb of Papillion. The project was expected to employ a thousand people and add more than $200 million to the local economy. According to Omaha, Omaha Chamber economists, but despite construction being nearly complete, the facility won't open until 2024, according to the Nebraska Examiner, as a dip in, in commerce has Amazon rethinking its massive warehouse portfolio. This project remains a crucial piece of our rapidly growing area and will continue to facilitate its arrival. Vita Jeffrey, the president and CEO of the Greater Omaha Chamber, told Insider, Amazon declined to provide a price tag for the Nebraska facility, but plans included about 1,800 spots, parking spots trailer spaces, and bike racks, the examiner reports. In a statement, Amazon said it is still planning to launch the facility, but had to adjust its timing. We know the Papillion community is looking forward to the opportunities we'll be bringing to the area and will share new timing along with information about the great jobs, pay, and comprehensive benefits we'll be offering just as soon as we can. A representative said, the project joins a growing list of warehouse delays for Amazon. CFO Brian Obasky told reporters in April that the company is now stuck with too much space after adding its real estate, a state empire between 2020 and 2022 to keep up with the pandemic fuel surge in e-commerce demanded. Amazon is reportedly planning to supply up to 30 million square feet of warehouse space or Renacite leases with a warehouse in New York, New Jersey, Southern California, and Atlanta likely being affected. In June, Insider reported that Amazon CEO Andy Jassy was dissatisfied with the company former World Wall consumer CEO Dave Clark, who was viewed as responsible for Amazon's warehouse over, over expansion, overstaffing, and spiraling costs. Next news also from Business Insider. Wall Street Legend Wall Street Legend warns a strange day is coming to America. Hmm. Wall Street Legend Mark Chaikin is known for speaking his mind on CNBC Mad Money. But today, he's going to public with something he has never said before on national air, not in any of his appearance on Force Business. Fox Business, or on CNBC. If a strong day is coming to America, says Chaikin, who predicted the 2020 market crash, a massive and surprising new transition that could determine the next big wave of wealth. If your own regular stocks, you're in for a big surprise, he adds. Chaikin, who has appeared numerous times on CNBC Fast Money, says that you absolutely must consider buying one particular type of investment right now, before it's too late. And no, it's not cryptocurrencies. I grew up in a world where you could do extremely well by investing in ordinary companies, Chaikin says. It's how I spend the majority of my 50-year career on Wall Street. But the simple fact is, I haven't seen something this big coming down the pike since the day called the collapse of Princeline.com on CNBC in 2012, which most experts didn't believe all the time at the time. But one trade show a 3733% overnight gain. Chaikin has agreed to name the number one investment to buy right now. 
Free of charge, Jim Cramer is one of many who's been following Chaikin Insight for years. As Cramer once put it, I learned a long time ago not to be on the other side of a Chaikin trade. And yet, even the most prepared Americans, including most retirees, may not hear about this new wave of wealth until long after the fact, Chaikin said. With Chaikin's permission, we're posting the entirety of his new briefing on our website right here, ticker symbol included. You can access it free of charge. Now I have this other news which I want to read. Mm -hmm, let's see, it's called Healthline. I usually read news from Healthline. So let's see if they have anything interesting. I like to read different news. Maybe fitness would be perfect. So if there's anything exciting about fitness. Okay, I will read this one. Welcome to Healthline Fitness. A letter from the editor. Fitness isn't about what you lose. It's about what you can gain. Six weeks after the birth of my second child, I had a moment of reckoning that forever changed what I appreciate about exercise. I sat in my OBGIN's waiting room, staring at the fluorescent green intake form on the clipboard in my lap. I tried to read the page through teary eyes as my baby slept quietly in her car, seat next to me. Do you often feel anxious, angry, or sad for no good reason? Are you able to look forward to tomorrow? Have you ever had thoughts of harm coming to yourself or your baby? My first extent was to lie, but behind the constant of clamoring of anxious thoughts, I heard a small, quiet voice in my head. Be honest, it said. Until that moment, until that moment, I was unable to admit what I knew in my heart was to be true. I was struggling with postpartum depression. They called my name and I walked into the clinic. When my doctor walked into the room, she asked, So how are you doing? Before I could respond to floodgates burst, the sea of anxiety that had swallowed me for weeks flew the room, and I sobbed uncontrollably. My doctor looked at me in the eye and calmly level with me. She said, I think you may have postpartum depression, but do you feel about beginning some medication? I knew I needed to see treatment, but I want to start with my tried and true saving grace movement. Movement is medicine. Now, don't get me wrong, postpartum depression is a very serious diagnosis, diagnosis, and in some cases, medication is the best course of treatment, hands down. I knew that, but I, I also knew physical activity could also help jumpstart my recovery. I hadn't yet been given medical approval to some resume exercise, and as a pilot instructor dancer and outdoor adventurer, movement had always been my preferred form of stress relief. Getting clear to exercise was key to my mental health. For the first time, I realized it wasn't just my body that was craving movement, it was my brain too. I answered her, what about exercise? Can I move yet? Can I like hike, run anything? My doctor told took out her prescription pad and started writing. Exercise, 30 minutes a day, she wrote. She ripped the script off the pad and handed it to me. Let's try it, but I'm gonna call you to check it. If it's not enough, we'll try the medication. The next day, I laced up my hiking boots, put the dog on a leash, strapped my baby into a carrier, and headed out into the freshly fallen snow for a hike. Every step felt therapeutic. Finally, I was moving my body again, breathing fresh air. The rough thoughts that rattled in my brain started falling in line with the rhythm of my steps. With each and every step, my mind quieted, focusing more on the way my body felt in that present moment than on the fear that kept me awake at night. My body was still healing and I moved slowly, intentionally. I felt that muscle, my muscle wake up. I wasn't anywhere near my peak physical condition, but it didn't matter. I was moving and that was enough. I was thinking about losing baby weight or pushing myself to achieve. I was only thinking about clearing my head one step at a time. 
Slowly and steadily, I wailed up that hill. I walked up that hill, and I knew it was beginning of my recovery. Move toward joy. At the, at the time, I had no idea that this experience would be so impactful. Looking back, I know... Looking back, I know that for the first time, I was embarking on the fitness journey motivated by what I knew I would gain, a better outlook, a better mood, and better sleep, instead of what I thought I had to lose all too often. All too often, we start working out because we don't like about ourselves. Too often, we begin exercising with the voice of an inner critic in our head telling us we aren't enough in some way, not strong enough, not thin enough, not motivated enough. We feel like we'll be more if we lose, yet starting a fitness journey to appears that inner critic rather than a quiet it usually results in frustration, disappointment, and fail commit commitment. We beat ourselves up and mentally and physically, working against our bodies, trying to get them to conform us to conform to a standard of someone else's design. Inevitably, it makes the journey that much hotter. Instead of what I found was that I was better able to see all the exercise could offer me when I stood in the place of acceptance. A successful fitness journey requires meeting yourself exactly where you are now, learning leaning into how you feel instead of how you look. From that perspective, you'll be able to read the benefits of working with your body instead of against it. Soon and sometime without realizing it, you'll come to appreciate and that you're capable of, even when you're just getting started. Fitness that fits you. With the launch of Healthline Fitness, we're excited to meet you wherever you are on your fitness journey. We're here to remind you that fitness isn't about you have to lose, it's about what you can gain. So much of the border fitness narrative is about weight loss and unrealistic expectation. But we believe fitness is so much more. When you move in a way that feels good, you'll improve your mental and physical health outlook and confidence and courage and that's just the beginning because when you find a movement that moves you you'll naturally want to keep going for years to come whenever you experience athlete or just exercise curious we'll meet you where you are on your exercise journey and help you with attainable real life fitness goals that work with your lifestyle Fitness is for everybody, and we're creating a digital space in which everyone can find the support and resources they need. And while we eat it, we'll challenge the notion that fit looks a certain way. Our writers, medical reviewers, and video talent are experts in their field, certified strength and conditioning coaches, personal athletic trainers, physical therapists, and even filed canic feeds. So that's the end of my reading news time. I've accomplished it. So bye, I'll see you next time.